So let's talk about yeah. Gordian the first. Um, I think Ugh. Gordian is well, Gordian the f Gordian the first and Gordian the second. We kind of have to talk about both of them because they reigned exactly the same amount of time. Together. Yes. Um, Twenty-two days. Yes, he's the shortest emperor on record. Um, <laughs> a fairly secure amount of days they ruled. Quintilus will come to. But um, it, it doesn't go that well for Gordian. Um, his, well, he's proclaimed emperor by the Senate and he goes, he goes okay. And his son also becomes emperor and he's put in charge of the army to deal with Caecilianus. Ka Ka Capelianus. Capelianus, thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> to defeat them. Gordian II is killed in battle against Capellianus and his forces defeated, and then Gordian I, after hearing the news, commits suicide. Which isn't all that good of a record, really. Um, <laughs> there's an element of valiance, and he had been quite a respectable official earlier in his life, because he was quite an old man when he became emperor. Hence why Gordian II is the campaigning. Um, yeah, I think he was a octogenarian, wasn't he? He was in his 80s. Yeah, I think he also wrote a history of Antoninus Pius or something like that. Oh! <laughs> I think it might be in the Historia Augusta, so it's probably complete nonsense, but... Um, right. I'm... I... I think he's poor and incompetent, Gordian. I don't think he's bad, because he's not necessarily... He didn't make poor decisions or anything like that. It's just Gordian II, who I'm also putting in incompetent, was not was outgeneraled by Capellianus. And oh, they both ended up dead because of it. Yeah, I I, I mean I agree. I think they're both poor. I, I I mean I fundamentally don't understand why they did what they did. Because yes, they had prestige on their side with Gordian being the, uh, the proconsul of Africa. It does, I mean, there's a whole question of whether they took the initiative or not. And, but the problem is sources have this, the sources have this trope of recusatio where the emperor is offered the emperorship and then the soldiers or the people have to kind of force it on them. Yeah. And we get in the accounts for Gordian. That is, I mean, that is a trope. And so it may well be the case that Gordian did take the initiative thinking he could lead the senatorial charge against Maximinus. My problem with this is, I mean, yes, it worked in the end for the Senate, not for Gordian, but he doesn't have a legion under his command. He, the proconsul of Africa does not have significant military forces. He He's there to, you know, he's in charge of the province that has the grain supply to Africa, to the city of Rome, which is going to be on the side of Africa anyway, if the Senate joins him and they did so it's not like he can wield the grain supply as a weapon i think i may be wrong but uh in the only two public provinces with legions in them was macedonia and africa by this time the legion that was in africa was now in the equestrian province of numidia and that's right. where Elianus comes in and so he's starting this usurpation without having the the third Augustan legion of Numidia on his side and their governor, Pelianus. And so that's why we have Gordian II taking them on outside of Carthage or in the vicinity of Carthage with his sort of peasant army. Yeah, his levy. Yeah, and quite naturally getting badly defeated. <laughs> so I, I, I just, I have trouble sympathizing with an effort that doesn't at, at the outset involve at least one legion. <laughs> It almost, it almost gives credence to the fact that he was thrust into the Emperorship because you'd have to be mad to think that your levies would be able to defeat a Roman legion, not just auxiliary troops. Yeah, maybe that is the case. Maybe maybe we are, maybe he was an unwilling. I mean, maybe Gordian II was perhaps a bit jingoist. I don't know, sometimes tropes are accurate as well. I think Gordian II, I mean, it's hard to not view Gordian II as a poor emperor because he's the one who went out there and actually took the legion on in a battle, whereas he could have remained behind the walls of Carthage. Um, I guess to Gordian I's credit, he at the very least has 
his whole seizure of power with regard to Rome is kind of cool because he does send like that private dispatch to the Senate of Rome and then they quickly organize with, with orders to kill uh, the Praetorian Prefect and the deputy of the Urban Prefect because they understood them to be Maximinus loyalists and very and I think the soldiers showed up during the early morning of the Praetorian Prefect, the Praetorian Prefect would start his having his daily meetings at four in the morning or something. They, the soldiers showed up, well, the, 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 not the soldiers, the senatorial, the senators showed up as if to have a meeting and then cut him down. And so I guess I have to give him credit for kind of a cinematic and well-executed takeover of the city. Yeah. I suppose I could see him as maybe mediocre if it was really thrust upon him, but Gordian the Second, no matter what, I view as poor at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I just think 20 days is uh, a bad it's record pretty... even for Roman emperors where you can have emperors one after the other, um, but yeah. Yeah, it's pretty I, bad. I, I've been competent in the end. 